Hi everybody, welcome back to another episode with Kirsten Kemp, the confident dancer on YouTube. She's amazing, we love her. Um, the Thank you. Yeah, welcome Kirsten. I love you. Oh, I love right you back. too. Right back, with all the people, you know, we all love you, Catherine. Well, thank you. The last one went over so well and you guys left us comments and questions, so we wanted to do another edition because I, you all know I'm on the mental health train for dancers. I think it's so important yeah. and it's not talked about. So here we are, and today we are going to be talking about how dancers can build self-confidence. Because as I'm sure you all know, it's easier said than done. <laughs> like, yes. <laughs> like it's just one of those things that you go into the studio, you think it's gonna be great, and then halfway through class, you're like, I hate my life. Yes, so. <laughs> yes, the juice from the pep talk ran out. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then you're left in the middle of pirouettes like, Oh, <laughs> I can't do this, and I am a terrible dancer. Yep. Yeah, so really relatable. So, Kirsten, let's just go ahead and like dive right in. What are your like initial thoughts on this? And are there like tricks and tips we can use? Like, what can we do to actually make changes in our brains? Because I think so many people think, yeah. "Oh, I'm going to build confidence," but you never actually do it. So, how do we yeah. do this? Yes. So I think the first thing is really dissecting what confidence actually is. And for anyone who follows me, this will be redundant because I just need to scream it from the highest mountaintops because it's true and it's so simple. Confidence, it is not just a result of being good at what you do. It's not just you, I mean, confidence like happens to you when you become a professional dancer or then a principal dancer. No, all confidence is technically is a feeling of being sure about something. So you're just sure, you know? And when you just recognize the very, very simplest form or definition of confidence, I don't know about anyone else, but for me, that makes it a lot more approachable. So instead of putting the idea of confidence behind this, this wall of telling yourself, even if it's not conscious, one day I'll be confident when I can do a clean triple pirouette, when I look like that girl because she seems to have a great life, or when I get the contract. And until then, it's natural to struggle. And yes, it's natural to struggle. That is the human condition, so totally normal. Um, hey, like, I'm a mindset coach. I struggle with my mindset sometimes. I have to be my own client all the time. So it's totally normal to have dips, but I always want to make confidence approachable and practical for dancers so that they don't have to keep living that, honestly, that lie that it's behind the wall of a certain status or level of accomplishment. Instead, when you just break it down to Confidence is the feeling of being sure about something. So therefore, I don't actually have to rely on being sure of someone else's opinion of me, sure of my future, sure of that I'm better than others, um, or a good dancer even, because like, what does that mean? It's such a subjective idea. Instead, if you could start to be sure of things that are within your control and that are actually sustainable, you'll start to recognize how accessible the feeling of confidence really is because for example instead of trying to be sure that you're going to nail that pirouette combination which you know i think a lot of dancers in our best efforts we're like trying to work ourselves up we're like okay i need some confidence here so like let me give myself the pep talk you can do it you can do it you can do it okay that could work a little bit mm -hmm. But not it's all the not time. Very, it's yeah. like kind of exhausting if you try to do it all the time. And then the words, I can do it, kind of start to become meaningless because you see yourself make your mistakes and then you're like, can I do it? So instead of trying to be sure about something that hasn't happened yet, why not be sure of something that is within your control? No matter what happens, I can learn and I can use those learnings for growth. No matter what happens, I can always work on becoming better at, um, instead of making new mistakes, recovering from mistakes. No matter what, I can always, or I am always growing. I do have something to offer. And getting clear on things like that, rather than putting confidence out in front of you all the time, trying to be sure of things that aren't in your control, of course, if you do that, it will be constantly slipping through your fingers. So. Right. 
Also and I, I love what you said to the word yet. Because I mm-hmm. think sometimes you can, t- if you need like a quick f- fix, at least for me, if yeah. I'm struggling with, oh, I can't get this turn, just put the word yet on it. I can't get this mm-hmm. turn yet. I can't, I'm not quite there yet. I'm going to, that, that sort of tells your brain we're working towards it yes, instead of yes. like, it's never going to happen. And language is everything in this conversation. So I'm so glad you brought it up first. Yep. Um, because language actually suggest to your mind what pathway to go down. Anytime we are saying words to ourselves internally or externally, it actually brings up different feelings and different imagery in your mind that then directs the way you think, the way you feel, what your behaviors are, and then therefore your results. So if you're saying something like, why can't I get this pirouette? What that does is it is like a reminder to your subconscious mind or a request, like bring up all the evidence as to why I can't do this. How helpful is that to you? Yeah, that that one turn I missed when I was six. Let's remember that, you know, like. Right. (laughs) Let's go back. Let's go back. No, it, it doesn't work like that. So instead, just knowing how powerful language is and how you can always work on changing your self-talk. You can always change it. You can always reframe it to even instead of why can't I, or even I can't yet shift it to, I am learning to. That's true. You can't argue that. Right. I am. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Like you don't even have to say, this is great. I can do it. Like you can be realistic with yourself and say, I'm learning to, um, I can deepen my plie next time. I can spot a little easier, even instead of I didn't spot last time. Being forward focused and focused on what you can do and directing your language towards that is so empowering. And it's going to start to help all of us build experience with ourselves to suggest, hey, I am in control of my own mind, my own way of thinking, the way I feel. Um, And that is really empowering when you start to change your inside before the outside changes. That's where real confidence comes from. I also think too that like negative connotation that they say that like everybody says that about everything. Instead of saying I don't want this, you yeah. flip it to what you do want. You flip it to yes. I am learning. You flip it to instead of I don't want to be or I can't turn or I don't want, you know, you flip the positive. How could you say the mm-hmm. same thing? Yeah. It totally is. It's I want to encourage all I'll challenge all of the dancers watching just for a day, listen to yourself talk, and every time you say, I don't want that, I, I want to do this so this doesn't happen, just get rid of don't, can't, won't for a day, yeah. and see how you will struggle in a good way to be like, oh, wow, do I actually know what I want? Because it's so hard to say what I want. But then, hey, you can figure it out. So. Why not just start speaking that way? Totally. And I also think, like, sometimes, yes, we should all, you know, think positive. But sometimes it gets Mm -hmm. to a point where people force themselves. I'm going to nail this. And if you actually over force it and it's not realistic, then you actually make it worse, I find. Positive Mm -hmm. visualization is important. But you've got to start in a place where you can believe it rather than I'm going to do six pirouettes. And, you know, you've got to start small so your brain will believe it. 100%. That's exactly what I take my clients through. I think sometimes when dancers come to work with me to build confidence, overcome performance anxiety, self-doubt, things like that, um, I notice a lot of them have this misconception that we're going to go from like negative thinking to positive thinking. But I'm like, actually, what you think isn't so important as how true it feels for you, what you're thinking. So when you are trying to prepare for a performance, what's more important? How you feel the performance is going to go or what you're thinking about it? How you feel, because we always act out of how we feel. So we can be really flexible in the way we think in order to get the feeling that's going to serve us best. Maybe you want to feel calm, confident, grounded. Okay, well, you know what that's going to require? Acceptance that mistakes might and probably will happen yep (laughs) but confidence around your ability to move through them 
because once you have that neutrality and that acceptance, ironically, you will be a lot more able to go into the into the performance feeling confident because you're sure of something that's true. If you're like, this is going to be great, it's going to be perfect and no mistakes and that's all I ever visualized, of course you're going to feel this nervousness within you because you're incongruent. Your, your mind is going to be like, but is that really true? Because every other time you perform, you kind of stumbled out of your B+. Plus. <laughs> so we need to have, we need to have both. Yeah. Now, the other thing that I, you know, I struggle with as a young dancer still do, and I'm sure a lot of people do, is self-confidence in comparing yourself to the dancer next to you. Yes. Because that is such a thing in ballet and roles and who's this? And my leg is higher and her leg is higher. And her, like how, how can we approach, easier said than done, not comparing ourselves to other people? Because that can take yeah. your confidence from here to here in two seconds. Oh, totally. I'd say it's really about first acknowledging, well, I'll say taking what you see in this dancer's talent off a pedestal. I think it's so important to just take technique and talent off a pedestal in general, because what dancing is really about, I always go back to the feeling side of it, which is so ironic because as a dancer, I was I use this term as a joke, so emotionally constipated. I just, I was like, <laughs> we don't have room for feelings. I'm here to get the job done. Work. And yeah. so now that I'm like talking about feelings as my job, I think it's so funny. Um, you know, never, never uh, assume what your future is going to be, people. Um, but yeah, what was I saying? Okay, yeah, so the whole point of performing and what makes a really good performer is not technically what they're doing. It's how what they're doing makes you feel. And even how, like with what energy or emotion are they doing these technical steps? That's why Marianella Nunez is famous. Yes, she has crazy good technique, but why do we know her? For her soul. Yeah, amen. That's why yep. we know her. Yep. Because otherwise you can go on Instagram and find any, like there's probably a 15 year old out there who has technique like her, which I know is such a blasphemous statement. Probably not. She's very strong. Sorry, Melly, if you're watching this, I think <laughs> no, you're, you're literally the best in the world. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, so yeah, it's about her soul. And so the more we take the height of the leg off a pedestal and say, you know, I could have the highest legs in the room and the skittiest body, but if I'm feeling insecure, that's what I'm projecting. And it doesn't make people feel good. It doesn't make me feel good. And art is about sharing these common emotional experiences that people want to come into. Yeah. So if you first have that reframe of, you know, if I'm trying to be her and it's making me feel like garbage and like I have nothing to offer, I have lost the point yeah. first. Yeah, yeah. Number one. Number two, I always say, define success for yourself and define it in a way that works for you. So is your definition of success be the best dancer in the room? Have you ever set a definition of success for yourself? Or is it just something you're kind of, you flip through Point Magazine and you're just like, I should be the, says who? Maybe that's not your path and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe it is your path and that's a good thing. I don't know. So set it for yourself and it could be instead of I want to be the best or I even want to be a professional dancer. What if it was something like I want to really be true to myself through my dancing and tell a story of how dance makes me feel and share that with other people. That's pretty attainable and it's really important that we make success attainable for ourselves. Totally. Because I've, you know, in the past couple of years through the whole Miami thing, like I've done that to myself for a long time. I should yeah. be back in a company. I should be a principal, not a soloist. I should be this mm. many pounds. I should be, you know, I've done that to myself and struggle with that a lot. And I think it's only been recently that I'm like, no, you're on your own path for a reason. You're helping yeah. people. You're the example. It was even like with the YAGP gala. Like I felt like when I saw these guest artists rehearsing and coming in, I was just like, oh my gosh, I should be their size. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, no, 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 that's not the point of you. Your point is something else. You're, you're the yes. example for people who, the millions of other people who don't look like that either. So yeah. once I started to reframe of, okay, what is my actual purpose? 
I, it's good that I'm different. It's good that I'm doing this. You know, then it, then it starts to help, but I struggle with that forever. So that makes so much sense to me. Yes, I'm so glad. I was going to ask you what your definitions of success are, because we can have several. And you're just such a great example of having a purpose that is a step above. It's like an umbrella for all these other little purposes that we can get so caught up in, like being accomplished. Even that's a great thing. I could totally get caught in the trap of like, I know what's important to me as a person is accomplishment and it has a dark side and it has a great side. Yeah. (laughs) I have to catch myself when it's getting really out of hand and I'm telling myself, you should be here by this age. You should have a business like those people, like some of my own old ballet ways of thinking. Yes, I've, you know, done a lot of my own personal work and I like to be vulnerable online, you know, why not put it out there? I've carried some of the old patterns into my you know, new life and new business. And I still have to work through those things because honestly, if I let my old ways of thinking continue to make me feel like I'm not good enough, I I constantly have to work to compensate for my weaknesses, then it will take away from the light that I want to share with people, the ways that I want to serve. And I'm sure you feel the same. Like we can all get so caught up in these things. And so I want to just validate that it's normal and we're all, you know, we all have videos online all around us that give us our brains these uh, reminders of what we could be, Mm -hmm. but it doesn't mean that's what you should be. So maybe just start uh, for the dancers watching, taking it as information or like, hey, it's so cool that I can be exposed to these different things. But if it does start to become um, overwhelming for you to where you don't feel good enough. I'm a huge fan of getting off of social media. Amen to that. <laughs> Amen to that. Why not? Yeah, and this kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, how you think you'll be confident when. Oh, I'll be confident yeah. when this. Because when I was younger, my definition of success was literally a principal dancer in a major company. Mm-hmm. City Ballet, ABT, blah, blah, blah. And that I would only be happy then. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's, it's just one of those things that, like, okay, I've had to rethink. This is not, you know. And it's also I'm very aware of when I tell people my story. I, you know, a lot of people love my Once Upon a Point videos. But mm-hmm. I was very fortunate and then I did roles super young. Yes. And people will literally write me, well, I'm 17 years old and I haven't done a principal role with a company yet and am I behind and blah, 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 blah. And I see them comparing themselves to me. Mm. And I'm like, oh, maybe that, you know, but at the same time, then I fell off a cliff and had all these other issues. So you might not want to like compare your career after mine anyway. But it's, it's yeah. very, this comparison thing. And I think social media has made it worse. I'm so glad we didn't have it when we were young because. Oh my gosh. Little, I'm so thankful. <laughs> little Katie Oof. Morgan would have been on Instagram like, ah, like just, Oh my gosh. Right? Even Point Magazine for me at yeah. 12 years old, yeah. like when I've been doing yeah. my own personal development work, my own like healing work and stuff, I realized that I'm still a huge fan of Point Magazine, still a huge fan. And this isn't like a, to knock on them or anything, but my little 12 year old brain did not have any sort of framework for it. Like you are looking at a 25 year old who dances eight hours a day and cross trains on top of it and has an adult body. My little brain was like, well, if you want to be like them, you have to look like them. Yep. Yeah. And so then I had some very like disordered eating patterns for a while and thank goodness, you know, I worked through it. But I think we can all have our little things like that where we, from a young age or even just in day-to-day life, we can get so, um, we're very suggestible as people. And if you're just constantly exposed to perfection, excellence, people who seem super happy, our brains are wired to be like, oh, well, I want that. But then if it's super, if it feels unattainable for you, what your mind will notice is the distance between where you are and you know where they are that's a gap you'll see you'll start to feel like I'm not good enough I'll never get there so instead I love the tip to measure success backwards that can be a really big confidence builder what that means is compare where you are now to where you were two years ago would little 
Katie two years ago. Little Katie, you were like <laughs> still not. Little Katie. Still not. Um, yeah. No, hey, it's example. true though. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, I mean, I call myself Little Kirsten. You yeah. Know, when it was like two years ago, when I wasn't that little. Um, yeah, like, would she be proud of you? Mm-hmm. Even of what you've learned, like, hey, if you've had a for people watching, like, if you've had a really tough couple years where you haven't met your goals, you feel like everything's falling apart, could you still look back and measure the things that you've come through that you never thought you can handle? How you've grown as a person, how your outlook has changed now. That's going to build confidence. So always measure success backwards. That's good. That's really good. And, like, going back to social media, you're allowed to take a break. Like, I do it all the time. I did it recently here on YouTube. We had those those Potida series with Chris lined up, and I was like, great, I can, like, step back for a second. Because remember, social media is filtered. And everything, <laughs> yes. you're not going to post a picture of yourself looking bad. Like, no one's going to. And I see especially young ones get so caught up, and I have to live the Instagram life. I have to have Instagram technique. And it's like, that's filtered <laughs> literally oh like you know i say it all Even the time it's like not yeah. oh my gosh i see people the way we pose it makes us look a lot skinnier and yeah. i'll say me too because it's like i'm not gonna face the camera like, like no if i can like, like <laughs> no but then i've met people in real life where i'm like wow on instagram I'm so skinny and i'm like oh you look kind of like me i still think you're beautiful but like wow yeah that yeah. fooled me. I mean, it's just, it's so many people are going to screenshot this. But it's like, when you do YouTube videos, you try and not talk this way. <laughs> because, you know what I mean? It's just like, you can ha- you can look oh, yeah. totally different just by the way you're holding your head. So it's just, yeah, yeah it's a thing. We're all putting our best foot forward. Just recognize that. So, you know, that's another big one to remember in building your own confidence is Instagram is filtered. Social media mm-hmm. is filtered. You know, I edit the color and the whatever on YouTube videos. Like, I just do to make them look better. Yeah. Um, a, a picture with a girl whacking her leg, it's like, okay, did she actually double pay and hold it? Or did she whack it? Like, <laughs> let's yeah. be honest. Like, totally. So it's all filtered. The other thing I want to bring up is because we have, you know, with my audience, I have a lot of adults on here who might either have just started ballet or want to start ballet, but mm-hmm. they're like, I can't walk into that studio. I'm going to be so far behind. Or, or like somebody who's always wanted to do it, but just that fear of confidence, like the confidence issue is what prevents them from actually starting. What would you say to those types of dancers? Yes. So I think I kind of mentioned this even in the last video mm-hmm. that we did. Yeah. But... Well, I'll start in a different direction and I might be a little redundant just because it's true. Um, We don't need to be novel every time, okay? No matter what the internet (laughs) says. So um, first, be really aware of how we can project our own fears and judgments onto other people or even people we haven't met yet. What that means is we can start to assume they're going to see all the little tiny and big parts of myself that I don't like, and they're going to feel about it the way that I feel about it. And we don't even verbalize it that way. We just say, people are going to judge me. Hmm. How do you know? (laughs) Is my question. And hey, sometimes, you know, many people have a history with, for example, bullying. So that could feel like evidence or someone or being treated um instead of preferentially you're kind of ignored by a teacher and it seems like it's because of the way you look or the way you dance whatever history you have it can be understandable why we think realistically we will be judged however especially with um, starting something new just recognize that other people we have all heard that they're thinking about themselves and that is true The other thing is that even if they do notice you first, they are not going to be personalizing these judgments about you because you're different people. It, in other words, it doesn't matter to them if you maybe, you know, are a size 10 instead of a size eight, they're not going to be like, she should be a size eight, you know, if you're, (laughs) because it does, it's not their life. And so they're not going to be like, wow, it really matters to me and like ruins my day that you, you know, that's not how it's going to go. 
Um, in other, another thing is like, as people, we tend to have a bias, just like with social media, of thinking that other people are better than they are and that we are worse than we are. That bias isn't just for social media because it's run by humans. You take that into real life, you're going to assume and like project nice things onto others. So recognize that people are probably projecting those good things onto you and you're the one who might be holding yourself back just because of what someone else might think about you, but it's really about what you're thinking about yourself. So why not give yourself, I always say, give yourself a chance. Give yourself a chance to do what excites you, even if it scares you a little bit, and that's going to be so empowering. That's amazing, and it's it's so true. We think, and I probably said this last time, you think that everybody is judging you 100% of the time. But are you, and then you, you turn it around, are you actually in class looking at everybody going, she should be doing this, she should be doing this, he should be doing, no, you're focused on yourself. No. People aren't judging you as much as you think they are. Yes. I even have a funny, tiny little anecdote Please. about this. I thought it was really funny. Okay, so I have a guy friend, I had some people come over, some friends come over to my house for dinner. Uh, last weekend and we were all telling funny stories and I remember that he kind of reacted to something I said and I might have made a little facial expression about it and then I never thought about it after that I was just kind of like I don't think he liked that story or something I don't know and then I got a text from him where he's like "I I wanted to apologize because I feel that something I said made you feel insecure or the way I responded I was like I actually didn't have any more no. thoughts about it. I mean, that like literally not at all, but it's super sweet that you, you know, wanted to follow through and make sure I'm all good. Really nice. But it just, it showed me that like a lot of us, we're not really reading into things that much. We overanalyze stuff. Oh, yeah, totally. Everything. Like when Chris and I first started dating, I would overanalyze everything. Every text I sent. Was oh, he going to take my tone brain. away? Da, 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 da. Oh my gosh, he didn't respond right away. What am I going to do? Like, Yes. Guilty. (laughs) So just just to like wrap up here, like what are some daily practices? Because, you know, as we've said before, habits are how you change a thought pattern. Habits are how you change anything. What are some things we can do daily as dancers to really improve our confidence? Are there little exercises? Are there things we can think about? What what is like a plan for people? Yes, totally. So I will say that first um, each evening, and I did get this idea from a book I read recently, it kind of put into a framework something that I had already been practicing. It's called The Gap and the Gain by Dan Sullivan and Benjamin Hardy. Super good book, and there are a lot of just really practical tools in it, so I always recommend it. Um, Yeah, yeah, awesome. So in the book, he did talk about the idea of measuring success backwards, and he suggested to put it into a nightly habit of as you're going to bed, look backwards and instead of criticizing your day see what you learned from it and or can learn from it and force yourself even if it's hard at first to name three wins so that you go to bed with the sense of i did something today and your brain works through that stuff as you sleep so when you wake up the next morning, instead of carrying this weight of, I did nothing yesterday and I have to make up for it today, which can be a huge issue with dancers, I've noticed. Um, instead of that, you go to bed doing that practice. In the morning, set, um, you can either do, like they suggest in the book, I usually put it this way. If you're going into ballet class or rehearsals, whatever it is that you're doing, set an intention for what you want to challenge yourself to do um, like maybe a win that you want to create in that time and an intention not an expectation an intention like I'm excited to create this change it's very different than I have to to prove to myself that I'm good Mm. Mm -hmm. no 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 we don't approach things that way (laughs) it doesn't work it's not good for you okay so yeah you can go into it with what do I want to gain what do I want to experience today what are some wins that I want to um bring into the world um and so as you go throughout the day stay focused on those things and write them down to make it really real to yourself and put your focus on doing those things instead of what will happen if you're not intentional is you'll be likely to get lost in all the things you could do in the day but didn't do. 
all the things you could be or should have done. Instead, just stay focused on your one to three things. And hey, even if you don't get there, you can always go into your evening routine, look back and say, here's what I can learn from that. So I love the quote, you either uh, win or you learn. There's no losing. That's good. That's good. And I actually had another friend say to me once, she's also a life coach. She was like, you can should yourself to death. To death. Yes. <laughs> you could should yourself to death. And I was like, yeah, to death. that's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's that's so amazing. true. And that's simple. That's simple to do because I feel like sometimes is, you know, journaling is amazing, but people who feel like mm-hmm. I have to journal for 45 minutes, you're never actually going to stick to that. But like three little things in the morning and three things at night, that's brilliant. That's yeah. fine. That's doable. Simple, actionable, yeah. doable. It's what I'm all about. Yeah. Your mind is a very powerful thing. So yes. So yeah, it's it's Treat all it. up here. Yeah. Well, thank you, Kirsten. <laughs> this was awesome. Oh, thank you. Oh, I always have so much fun. And we'll have you. her back. We're gonna like keep this up because I think this is really important. So, yeah, let's so, do it regularly. So, yeah. If you guys missed the latest video, it's right there. You can click to watch. Love you all so very much, and we'll see you next time.